Can you help an old man? I used to work in this building, the computer <laughs> gaming world. Then they shut that down. Can then you... the Microsoft bought it, and they had a magazine. Then they shut that down. <laughs> then I worked on this website, and I didn't do a good job, so I had to leave. <laughs> then I went to EA, and I didn't do a good job there. And now I can't afford to feed my family. Can you spare a quarter? <laughs> wow. Well, you weren't even taping, can, can, were we? Can you spare some Peggle review code? Oh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Peggle 3 is out, and I haven't been able to play it yet. You just give me a dollar so I can download Peggle 3, sir, and make my day. <laughs> You gotta be specific. Like Peggle is like five bucks, and you've got three dollars and sixty-two cents. We're gonna get another dollar thirty, sir. <laughs> yeah, we're laughing now. We'll be crying in five years. What it is? Me. All right. So what else? What are we doing here? That. That. That's what we're doing. Are we gonna talk about Far Cry Two. Do we have time, or are you guys gonna do that next week? Because there is, in fact, gonna be next week. There's right? there? one more. One At least more. One GFW more radio. I, my my sincere wish for you group of of young fellows is that you uh, continue to podcast in some form because you're you're a very funny uh, group of guys and I don't think you need me to have a successful podcast. I fully believe you can do it. You di have done it in the weeks I've been gone, so I hope uh, on on behalf just, of the fans complain, then. that you continue. Well, some will, well, but you know, change is inevitable. You know. The, the uh, Colonel Blake had to leave MASH, and they went on. They got Colonel Potter. Some people never liked Colonel Potter. Other people loved Colonel you Potter. You just do the Bewitch thing and get a new Darren. You get a new Darren. Like, yeah. <laughs> or bring, hey, it's or, Jeff Green. Or bring back Darren. Yeah. <laughs> at, at lunch, da ja Darren, you were bitching about the fucking the fact that Barney Robo had a different voice oh, actor. Oh, shit, you're right. <laughs> now I'm being a hypocrite. That's right. I don't know if you guys if – because I was uh, actually alive during the switch – so this wasn't on reruns. I remember when they switched Barney Rubble's voice. Because he used to sort of have this voice. Hey, Fred. And then why well, something happened to that guy. He got fired or he quit or whatever. <laughs> and then the next Barney was kind of like this. And did I remember the, as a little kid, I was like, what the fuck? Did people on the message boards go crazy? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holy back shit, I can't even imagine. That must have been such a flame war. Yeah. Yeah. He did that with Donatello on Ninja Turtles. Did you talk about it in the playground at least? Oh, hell yeah, we did. Yeah. Was, was there any anger? Was there oh, any? Oh no, like, it'd be like I like the new Barney better. It'd be like you know that'd be. That but there wasn't. Stuff. You weren't like we're gonna go fucking one star this on Amazon type shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, See, that's what I'm saying. Everything's better now. Everybody can do <laughs> shit like that. We had no voice. We were powerless against the man. But those same people the can Hanna bitch man. about the fact that you're not on GFW and that it's not the same for years and years, much as they do for Luke and and One Up. They do. But and let I don't me think say. I, any of us are interested in that. Well, so. let me say to those fans that after I leave, if there is still a podcast and these boys are involved here, you should listen. I'm Wait, are saying we, that are right we now. like recording? Yeah, I think um, we're recording. Okay, wow. Yeah, we're recording. <laughs> I would sincerely hope. <laughs> I they didn't know we, we got the sign. I would sincerely hope they would they would keep listening uh, to you guys talk that because I know that, I will. That sounds about like uh, Hillary Clinton. Really? Was that, that just a that Hillary speech? They're like, gave? you guys should definitely tune in to the GFW yeah, and since radio. They want Jeff, they're going to vote podcast. for EA now. They're not. They're going to listen to EA. They're not going to listen <laughs> yeah. to our podcast. I'm not doing anything. I don't have a podcast at EA, so listen to, listen yeah. to Brodeo this Two week. or whatever it's called. Yeah. So. And All right. I, and and if you are podcasting still, and then I can come back. Okay, and so. you're 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 appearing on Gamers with Jobs podcast this week, right? Oh, that's true. Uh, it, barring any difficulty or f conflict with my family, uh, Gamers with Jobs, who I've been a guest on a few times, and we have Julian Murdoch on our podcast here, so we're all good friends. Um, I've been invited to appear on their Sunday podcast, where I will probably yammer about some of the same shit. So that's good. This sounds fun. Yeah, sounds like fun times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. those are good guys. Good podcast. Uh, Maybe you guys find up making that garbage man. When you're out here begging for Peggle code, I'll invite uh -huh. you to do my garbage man podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the one where I deliver garbage? You just ride Rod Humble. <laughs> you talk shit on, <laughs> on the people's trash. There were on people whose trash we're picking. I up. think you're really onto something. You know, there was a someone guy who made his that. whole career out There's of uh, picking through Bob Dylan's garbage, like in New Jersey or someplace. That they they gotta have it. You know, it's like just undiscovered, brilliant material. Just I'm press sure. record. Basically, put a recorder in the cabin of the vehicle. And then, or actually, mic them up because when they're like hanging off the back, and I'm sure you get some of the best grumbling when they're actually trying to lift. And someone put like 50 pounds of cinder blocks and <laughs> <laughs> like in the tray. Oh my God, it's full of diapers! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are we done? No. Oh, we're not done. Well, this is how like 
Well, I guess we're. T- if you want to be done, we're done. No, we have to be done. I've been looking forward to talking about Far Cry. I know. I know you want to. No one else has. No one else has played it yet. So. We've seen some of it. But Do we you can like, like it? Look Are you nod. happy? I, I've been playing a lot of it because I have the thing at my house. Um, I've been able to basically have unlimited access to an unfinal copy, you know, so subject to change, as we, you should say. And um, definitely liking it so far. I mean, I'm to the point where I'm convinced it's a good game. And the the, the issue is whether or not it, it'll be great. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the most noticeable thing is just the fact that they've taken – I mean, you used to. You remember how much I liked Crisis when it came out? Yep. And I was so appreciative of their approach to level design, in that it it ultimately was on rails in some respect. But I mean, it, you could move sideways and backwards, so to speak. It wasn't just constantly and relentlessly moving you forward. Um, and it gave you a lot of, you know, because of that, it gave you a lot of tactical freedom, and you felt, you know, that you were someplace. And this takes it a step further and basically says, let's arrange the world as though it were Just Cause or Grand Theft Auto or something, and it's still going to be a first-person shooter, though. Um, and it's still going to remind. It's it's still going to have a a lot in common with with first person shooters, and it's basically not just going to be just cause with the first person camera. Um, there's a lot that you can get from there. I mean, the, the the immediate benefits are that, you know, when you're in this world, you instead of going from level to level, you really f- develop a sense of continuity and and familiarity with the place. You develop like you know a mental map of it. After a while, you start to recognize, okay, there's going to be a bend in the road up here. I know this, and there's probably a patrol here at this time of night. Maybe I want to, like, get out of the vehicle, turn out the lights, and go around the bushes or something. And just uh, the, the quality of the environment and the presentation really contributes to that. I mean, because it looks so phenomenal. I mean, the sun setting and moving through accelerated cycles, kind of like mm-hmm. GTA, but instead of whatever the speed there is, like a half hour is a whole day cycle here. It's about four hours per hmm. 24 hours. Um Changes in weather, a storm will come through, and then it's not just that the sky darkens and, and that it rains, but the wind actually registers in the world with a certain direction. And that could have a bearing on the, the, the flammability of that world. So, I mean, you know, you throw something, you could, you could shoot, um, say you're, just, you're, you're having a gunfight and you end up shooting a box of ammo, then the rounds start cooking off and doing their fireworks show, and that could set a fire to some tall grass that was beside the box. The wind's blowing your way and it's blowing strong. The, confl- the conflagration is going to, you know, envelop you really quickly. Hmm. You could have times when there's not. And, I mean, the flammability is a big part of it. You can have just, like, you're fighting people and you want to keep distance between you and them. Maybe they got shotguns or something and you could put down a firewall and they're obviously not going to come across it. I mean, then suddenly you've got the advantage because you can shoot your rifle through it and throw grenades over it. Um, and all, all that seems cool. And, and it's also neat to just be able to have that kind of like, you know, I'm going to go here and I'm going to take this mission or I'm just going to go explore and see what's up. I'm going to just try to climb this mountain and hang glide off of it and try to land on a church or something. Again, very Grand Theft Auto-like things when what, what people have celebrated for the longest time. The the drawbacks, though, that I'm... I mean, I've only played it for about four hours, so I can't, you know, conclusively say that any of this stuff is like a a definite danger and that, that there are going to be issues when the, the game ships out and people play through it in its entirety. But um, in a game like a Half-Life or something, you always have this objective. I mean, in, in Half-Life 2, it's a citadel. It's omnipresent. You see it. You're always aware that you have a destination and you're heading toward it. Maybe to some extent in Halo, you know, you're going to end up on the, the titular uh, Halo space station and probably blow it up if it's anything like the Death Star or something. And... But they have like this, I mean, you, you do have this sense of, of forward movement and drive. And and what this game kind of game, because it doesn't have it, it's more, I mean, it's got an objective. But since you're just crisscrossing the same world and you mm-hmm. d- might not necessarily feel that you are building towards something, you know. I mean, even though you got the continuity, if you go from Savannah to Jungle, I mean, you've, you've, you've driven from one ecosystem to another and you've experienced that. It's not like, huh, where am I going to be at in the next level? I'm going to be underground in the antline caves or am I going to be in Russia, you know, Call of Duty's case, and then I'm going to be back here, the nuke going to go off. So, you know, that that can be an issue. And then the other thing is, is that in this kind of game, w- what happens then is since you don't have these scripted set pieces where you're, um, you know, I mean, you can just like really carefully tweak the, the intensity throughout the ent- for the entire play experience you say yeah let's put in a, a couple big heavy grunts here i'm trying to draw examples from a bunch of different games mm-hmm. so it's not just half-life over and over again i talk about that one because I, I i played it so much and you know we're gonna have a tank come out here or something and, and in this game it's not so carefully orchestrated 
and players might decide I'm not going to have a fight for another hour. I'm just going to go on the outback and drive around or something, and, and then there's going to be a random encounter. What that then means is that the quality of those random encounters have to carry the game to an mm -hmm. extent because, I mean, if your missions consist of a series of, like, raiding base camps, you know, mm -hmm. being you have to go assassinate someone here, you have to steal something here, acquire this from this base, and it's just going from one place to another and having these fights. Those fights better be pretty fucking good. Mm -hmm. and right now... They are insofar as, you know, dealing with the flames, you know, goes and everything else. But the AI pretty much stinks. They could t they could fix that, you know. But right now it, it stinks. And This I, is I mean, a beta you're looking at? or <laughs> It's not a beta. It's just a, a preview code. Okay. So, so, again, like, you know, totally subject to change. But, I mean, right. that's going to be something to watch for. What, right. You're going to need not confused and wooden enemy behavior, but you're going to need interesting stuff where... Sometimes they'll do it. Like, I mean, I had a, a circumstance where I was... Let me get a drink here. That's not a drink. That's Red Bull. <laughs> <clears throat> so I had a... Like, the other thing that's cool about the game is instead of constantly moving forward and fighting, you have the ability to retreat. And you, so you have escape phases as well. So if you go to some camp and you strip the hornet's nest, kill one guy, and you say, I'm getting in a jeep and getting out of here, you have people chasing you, which is something that you don't always get in, you know, in a Call of Duty or something. And that can be cool. I had a part where they, they shot my truck up at... I thought it was going to overheat to the point that I was like, all right, I'm just going to get out. But apparently it wasn't done because I got out and started running, and they, people chasing me, got in it and used it to run me down. <laughs> it cheated. <clears throat> and that was totally cool. I mean, and there's another time where people were chasing me. And the first time I was like, dude, are these people chasing me? Like, what what idiots? Because I, I had RPGs on me. I had a ton of them. So I just get out of my car and, like, shoot them with RPGs, and it's just big, dramatic, incredible explosions as they go flying through, like, the African night and set a fire out into the weeds on, on yeah, the I side see, of the road. I, I, could see it, I could see it totally working without halfway <clears throat> decent AI just because of the whole Grand Theft Auto idea, which Grand Theft Auto, even for, you know, has never had... <coughs> Um, enemies that didn't come across to me like um, like the guys who you know pop out of boxes and digitized uh, shooters that you'd play at putt putt. Yeah, um, but there's I would argue from what I played, there's like a great deal more variety in Grand Theft Auto. Really, and in the types of the missions and just the whole thing. I mean, the whole you know running over random people and I mean all those different things that go in. Sometimes you have like an RC mission or the missions to like race your car yeah. or something. And here, I really don't, I can't say because I, I haven't experienced the game in its entirety, so I don't know what the true range of mission objectives are, but all the missions I've done so far have more or less been about going to a place, having a firefight, and getting out and going back. It sounds it sounds um, kind of like more in the vein of Crackdown. Like, you go, you're, you're like, scale, you know, you're, you're making then, your way to some central point that you gotta, like, fight all the enemies at. Right, and, then, and even yeah. in Crackdown, though, it's kind of like... Well, co-op is really important in that circumstance. Yeah, sure. This would have been a f fantastic game for co-op. Oh, my yeah. God, I would have loved it. But um, but it's still like the Crackdown. You're like, yeah, let, we're going to jump to the top of this building and play like we're Spider-Man or the Hulk jumping through the city or something, you know? Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong, but that could be the case, right? Maybe maybe flying hang gliders is that much fun. Maybe there's, like, helicopters we don't know about in the game. Cause so far, it's just boats and trucks, you know? Yeah. And, and that, that might totally be the case. Um. What else? There's a few other concerns I have about the game, I and mean, because it is drawing from GTA, it's like it also risks acquiring, inheriting some of like sort of like the the defects that are unique to that kind of game. Mm -hmm. And that would be, say, your mission to go and assassinate someone, and in terms for the completion of the mission, or to actually return to the person who gave you it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now, on the PC version, you can save anywhere, so it's not a problem. But mm -hmm. say on the console, you have to be at a safe house, a uh, safe house to save. Well, what happens when you you go do the mission? You're successful. Drive, involves a 15 mile drive there and on the way back you run into a random patrol and then you die then you, you're presented with a situation where you're going to do it again you know yeah. I mean, so those are little things that could happen at first I was worried about this one thing where you go it's like a problem with MMOs in MMOs if you don't have a quest you can still go to quest places mm -hmm. but it's and you can still do the same exact thing sometimes even with other people but the game doesn't acknowledge that you've done anything because right. you're not officially on the quest line right and here I go out to this giant fort, and it's full of people, and it's clearly designed. I mean, they clearly took the time to create this fort because it's going to be a mission at some point. It wasn't a mission I was on at the time. So I went, cleared it out, blew everyone up, rooted through it, and tried to find every single thing I could, make sure there was, like, not some, you know, uh, hidden diamonds or something in there. Um, nothing. And it was like, I just know that at some point in the game, that's going to be a mission, and I'm going to go right back. You got to go like, do hey, it again. I remember you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, well, will they still be dead? 
Oh, certainly not. I'm yeah. sure they'll be that would back. Be, that through. would be really funny, though. They would be cool if they were. If you go right. back and they're yeah, dead. Yeah, and like, they, and we need you, have... you to clear out the fort. Way to go on clearing out yeah. the fort. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what I was thinking would would work in that would be like, I mean, because the, game the game's fiction already assumes that someone has GPS tracking on you. Yeah. Because um, you get these cell phone calls now and then. Oh, no, no but because when you die, is an interesting part of the game is that you don't really die the first time, but you have these allies, and they come in. It's like they just come in out of nowhere, you know, and then they pick you up, and you weren't really mm -hmm. dead. It's like maybe you had you have a broken hand, and you like it just automatically shows you like setting your fingers in first person or pulling out like a nail from between your fingers or yanking a mm -hmm. bullet out of your, your leg with a pair of pliers as they're fighting. Yeah. And then you fight with them for like five minutes, but their ability to arrive anytime you're in danger implies that they know where you're at. So those same people could say, hey, you're by this fort. There's a motherfucker that needs dying there. Why don't you go do this right now? Well, it's, it's, yeah. that's the kind of world it is. It's yeah. it's like harsh. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just like s savage people, you know. Sounds good. It's, it's like, a world uh, in which motherfuckers need dying. Yeah, I mean, it's like people people <laughs> be a good from all tagline. around the world. That'd be great for the hard. box. <laughs> yeah. there, there's this war between two factions going on, and people from all mercenaries and hired guns from all around the world and with different interests and opportunists there to make a buck off it, you know, off, off mm -hmm. something or another, off selling weapons or diamonds or there. And those are the people that are, you know. I, d I definitely think. If that was on the box, more people would buy it, I think. Because motherfuckers need diamonds. <laughs> Far Cry 2. Coming December 2008. Oh, I, I think that sounds like a good commercial, you know? Yeah. And I think you should work on that somehow and work that into a Sims ad. <laughs> Sims 3, because motherfuckers need diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Removing the staircase from the pool, you know, you're, locking you're, people in their rooms. You're the only one here that knows about the new Sims expansion pack, which is Sims Automatic Web. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be my goal. Because motherfuckers need, need dying. Yeah. Mr. Humble, I have a great idea. <laughs> I like this. Like, teenage we, girls will like, love this. Yeah, we, no, we sell this to teenage girls. We need to start selling it to, like, the, the key <laughs> male demographic. <laughs> <laughs> I you love can go Sims, and you pitch it I like, you know your, you know your sister Sims world that she spends so much time in? <laughs> and then it's just like, boom, boom. They like the trailer starts. It's like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Shit, people bodies flying. Uh -huh. It's like the yeah, little the boy running through, like murdering his whole family. <laughs> the, yeah. the little brother you, who used to like torture the Barbie doll can now come right. and like yeah. destroy his sister's <laughs> Sims family. And they could sell that and make it happy. Yeah, here. and then they could make uh -huh. things happy because you're basically, it clones a copy of their world. It's not like the sole existing one. So that way he can do it and, and feel like that without making, you know, Susie cry because her world's been destroyed. Right. And then they can have a version for her, for her, then like she can go in and like do whatever, you know, make all of like his uh -huh. like super protagonist Put and like, gay relationships and stuff. No, fuck that. I, like, just I, to, I think just to mess with him. I right? think it should be on a USB stick and little brother can just go into the computer, <laughs> just plug it in, start killing <laughs> permanently. <laughs> so, <laughs> permanently. So it's st strictly in USB. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just like you're coming in, you hack into her game. I don't know if there's any like basis for that in reality. I saw it on TV, but I think we can make it happen. USB, pop. There's a lot you automatic see on TV, weapons. like the classic one, like we need more RAM, we need more RAM, and then you hear like, did it, did it, did put someone. We've like, got the, it. Yeah, someone puts a couple, <laughs> couple keystrokes in on the computer. Yeah. He's like, there you go. <laughs> we, oh man. Mm -hmm. So um. <laughs> Only, the the game's also got this like really elaborate world editor that uh, for multiplayer that seems pretty cool to use. Um, I mean, people really like Forge for Halo Three that allows you to basically place mm -hmm. weapons and bounce pads and and change change items, vehicle spawns and such. And then here's a, like a true proper world editor. But the difference is is that I mean, importantly, it seems really easy to use and to to use in a way where the results are are good. Um, so like if you don't if you want to be the sort who who specifically plants every tree and every bush and every rock and you go through with a texturing tool and you texture this amount you want to transition say you put a creek bed in you're like I, these kind of plants are on like the sides I don't want any so repetition. basically if you're a professional landscaper right if you're a professional yeah. landscaper or like someone who you you want to maybe you're thinking about making levels at some point you know mm -hmm. and it's a it's a really accessible way to try or you could just take. Uh, you know, this this procedural tool and put in, say, like, hey, I want this, and, and you, you change the size of the brush. It could just be enormous. I'm just going to coat all this landscape in it. But then you're like, hey, that might look too shitty, so I can you just change a few other variables, and it will be like, 
only apply this to slopes that are like this grade or something because then that way you don't have hills that look they have like trees growing off and it's just like entirely oh, so you're saying like you, you've got like the tree brush and you paint across this, the countryside and you can define some rules like yeah but don't put them on rocks yeah don't exactly on... don't put them on slopes yeah. and it will it will already do a nice job of randomizing it and stuff and yeah. then based on the type of jungle or whatever like it'll put the audio in so like the appropriate types of like bird sounds and stuff like that because these guys you are can... these guys that are making the game are like obsessed with all this procedural simulation stuff right i mean i, lo I looked at far cry like uh, like a year ago or a half a year ago and they, everything that they were wanting to tell me about was like all the crazier procedural like simulation stuff they had going for like how the world knows where to grow grass and trees because you can chop it all down mm -hmm. and right can, exactly yeah. those are the same sorts of things like yeah. a riverbed say you put you put in a riverbed very easy you just take the tool draw a line right through same same thing as a road or something throw another pass over it with the texturing tool and it just kind of like randomizes it so it's not this uniformly mm -hmm. deep creek bed and then you go on yet another tool all this takes like just a couple of minutes and say put this put this uh texture and, and these sorts of assets on any part of the map that's that's like five feet below sea, the equivalent of sea level in there then boom the creek bed's got its stuff and you don't have to worry about it appearing somewhere else mm -hmm. and that seems fun and what i think people are going to do is I mean, they'll they'll do some interesting things. And at first, it's it, I just imagine like just shitty unbalanced maps will proliferate. This is the norm. Anytime a, a map editor, even professional ones like Source, when it came out, you know, and gimmick games, but those can be fun too. So like, say you just make this giant flammable world or whatever with key areas, and you throw everyone in it, and so you put high winds, and it's randomized. So the next thing is like basically running through just this giant burning field of tall like elephant grass, but still trying to fight each other or something maybe that yeah. i mean that's a shitty example right yeah, it's yeah. like but someone could do it mm -hmm. then you know i was kind of speculating people are probably going to say i mean there's there's only certain kind of games you could imitate and in this case you probably could make a lot of you could do far cry 2 versions of cod popular cod maps mm -hmm. the games are like similar enough you know it's not like halo or something where they're like really different and they're inside and um because you're using the buildings and stuff and then after that people could probably have fun just like figuring out cool ways to set things up you know where can you like, bring in stuff that just doesn't fit with the world at all like can you build a mcdonald's in africa no. all the <laughs> assets are basically ones that they're taking from the game so mm -hmm. there's like a range of stuff in there i mean there could be industrial works and like you know colonial churches and you know all this kind of stuff like that and down to just like really seedy shacks and stuff and then just open environment and i hope you could put the animals in multiplayer that will be pretty cool because there are scenarios you know like uh, clint hawking was telling me He's the creative director for the game that, you know, he's had, you know, the best case scenario is when you have anecdotes when you play these games. It's like this, I did this and this happened. Kind of like, you know, the one I gave about being chased. And in his case, it's like he all he alerts these guards and they start summoning all this help and the Jeeps are coming in. And right when they come in, like one of them, like just this uh, buffalo or wildebeest just jumped out in front of one of them. And so it hit that and boom, sent the truck flying, killed the animal. Or another time where like, you know, you're trying to sneak up somewhere and gazelles see you. And they run, and then that ends up alerting the AI, so then they go out to a search to yeah. see what the hell caused that. So, I mean, that would be pretty interesting if you can put those, if you can put the animals in multiplayer games, too. Of course, everyone's just going to, like, then make the map where it's, like, nothing but 50 <laughs> buffaloes in the middle of, like, a pen, and then everyone's got <laughs> missile launchers, you know. Like, that sounds you know. great, though. Yeah, that does sound yeah. good. Yeah. True. Oh. True. Um, it's getting sad. So yeah, our, we, our, if we just keep talking, it can't end. Our time is coming. If we keep talking, <laughs> Jeff can't leave. Did you guys know <laughs> we'll that do these, a these, are, these make like good shakers? Okay, not really. <laughs> this well, is you, you want to eat some more toxic waste, Jeff? No, you... I really don't want to eat more toxic. That's, I don't even... want to go out by vomiting. <laughs> on well, air. what do you? What's your final message before you start whoring yourself out to fifty other podcasts <laughs> for the rest of the week? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only on one more. Those game was game are jobs. Let's let everyone know. Hey, dude, where your joystick, wherever you're at, you want <laughs> Jeff on? I'm his agent now. <laughs> I can hook you up. <laughs> I, know, I know his Skype ID. <laughs> now I'm gonna uh, quickly run out of things to say. So, uh, and I'm gonna have to move on to my actual job, as mm -hmm. it were. So I start in two weeks. So, what are you doing until oh. then? Fucking around. Yeah, are you gonna just? <laughs> do you have like a book you want to read or? Uh? Or something you want to do? Or you're just gonna like lay around on in the bathroom. Desk. He's already reading it. It's another one of those like, <laughs> and the blood <laughs> bodies were up to my waist as I waded through the the slain something corket corn people. Well, it's not quite that good. 
<laughs> uh, no, I'm reading uh, Steve Erickson's uh, Malazan series. If you're a fantasy, based reader. in part on on his presumably on his D and D campaign. <laughs> okay, yes, it did, it did start as a D and D campaign, but in the, in his defense, he did. Did go, it? This is on the back. Based it, on a no, real no, D and D campaign. God, no, it doesn't say that. But if you Wikipedia it, you'll find out. But you know, he did go to Iowa Writers Workshop. He does know his shit as a writer. Um, it's a ten volume series, and each volume is like fat than the last i bet um, people loved workshopping his his stuff there yeah i honestly so, uh, is this guy a barbarian or is he a barbarian <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm just not finding these i'm elves not sure I, I know how i feel about you know, yeah what you're doing with i'm the sure barbarian. He, i'm sure he befuddled the workshop group but um you know it was based on a DD campaign and there are times when i'm reading it and i am laughing to myself because it's like clearly you know like this is the scene where the healer rolls up you know <laughs> whatever i mean you could kind of get you could kind of feel those moments but did that add to the excitement for you oh totally <laughs> <Yeah>. someone told <laughs> me that <laughs> happened in my campaign <laughs> someone i could have written this <laughs> did i roll on that yeah so uh but but he's a really good writer and he he's created this pretty amazing world i mean among fantasy fans this is a pretty highly regarded series if you're not a fantasy fan this is probably not going to change your mind and certainly over the past few weeks as i've read the first book i've thought I could just bring this down and do random readings, and you'll. D I knew Sean would just laugh. If I'm not laughing. I, Ryan's I, I, looking at I'm me the laughing. whole time. What is I'm that? laughing at. I'm laughing because Ryan's basically like it, laughing like what a fucking dork. It was all no. <laughs> what, Ryan, me? you said, you said it's pretty like, highly acknowledged among fantasy fans, and Ryan immediately <laughs> looked at me like, what if I said Booster Gold fans love this Booster Gold book? <laughs> <laughs> I, there will be people who will respond true. on message boards so telling you how good a writer this Erickson is. Of course so. they will. Send me he's PMs quite a good writer. Too. He's a very much a cut above. They most sent me of your PMs about how I should vote for Ron writers. Paul too. And well, why you, is he is he better than the Dragonlance writers? Well, well, I actually think so. Yeah. So you uh, read Dragonlance? I read the first one. So wow, I read like the, the first ten. Yeah, we'll see. You, you got, could be. You got nothing on me then. Could be reading about the size of testes of males and <laughs> yeah. male mammals. And I'm. I am planning on a week of nothing but stuff like that. So going to catch up on season one of Mad Men on DVD. Fine series, excellent, outstanding. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm almost uh, I'm about halfway through that season. So Netflix doesn't want to send me that. Why not? I don't know. I keep getting the movie behind it. That's because mm -hmm. I'm hoarding them. I guess <laughs> it so. likes me better. What do you mean the oh on your queue? The, yeah, the next yeah. one in your huh. yeah. I don't have any real final words. Go out and be happy. Put the sombrero on as you as you give us your final. Put the sombrero on. Put the sombrero. Well, yeah, this is the honorary the you're out of here I'm, sombrero. Yeah. I didn't know that was a ritual here. It is I guess now. it is. I'm now. It doesn't fit because of the headphones. Hola. Don't say nothing racist with that on your head. Now. Hola. Don't do hola. <laughs> I, I am the Frito Bandito. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you were the one who actually speculated that uh, you you defended uh, homie rollers and said that like yeah like the the, the whole remember the whole shit about sure like, chili pepper riding a burrito was just like at home. <laughs> 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 you I did. That? I am a man of the people. Um, well, I no, I don't. Have to, let's just sign, <laughs> let's sign off here, Ryan. I'm, I'm I'm ceremoniously handing the sombrero to you as we sign off here on this very uh, very bittersweet occasion. Uh, I hope to see you all again sometime. You can't go. This is like the end of a first date when you're in high school. Like we got to keep coming up with the pretext to hang out for <laughs> five more minutes until we all make out. So <laughs> Dude, that, that's going to be you eating a mouthful of these. <laughs> you could do it, Jeff. Come on. Like I'll open it's them the for only you. Way, wait. The only you way eat, to go out. You eat, yeah, for your final, for final, your final moment. non-words, but for your final yeah. utterances on the GFW radio. Yeah. Three of them at once. Three at once. Yeah. Three toxic no, no waste spitting. at once. Do it. No this like, isn't yeah. the end of my podcast. This is like frat initiation. <laughs> Ryan, you guys are familiar. Can't I go out with class? You guys you know? are familiar with the story like of how. Like a Johnny Wilson, or Johnny Wilson, a Johnny Carson golf swing or something like that? You know? No. What's that? You're no. familiar with the story that Ryan Scott once What's tried that? Taco, Fucking kids. Taco <laughs> Bell mild sauce, and it yep. so burned his mouth he had to go into <laughs> intensive care. <laughs> 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 so here we go. Jeff, yeah. I don't want to. All right. Don't, on the don't lid. Touch on the him. lid. Yeah. No, on Jeff, you can. Okay. And then what are we going to do? It's, it's going to fade that, out with gonna me screaming? It's going to fade out with you. We will all observe a moment of awkward silence. All right. Uh, uh, no, no, I no, dropped no. It's one. Good. It's, it's okay. still good. It's, it's good. still it's good. good. More flavor. Three-second rule. Okay. Stare into the camera as this, you this put them all, right all at once. All right. We got, a, we got a red one, another red one. Do they have different flavors? And yeah, they're, they're I don't think different. you're going to uh, taste. You're not going to taste. The flavor is pucker. Okay. Yeah. I love you all. 
I will miss you. <laughs> I hope to see you again. Thank you for all your support over the years. It's been a pleasure. i uh, going to miss the podcast and all the fans. And on behalf of Toxic Waste, <laughs> brought to you by the government of Pakistan. <laughs> so you know it's good. Now with more so you know it's, good. it's a hard-boiled candy. <laughs> Guaranteed 14% Here we go. strontium. Here we go. I'll see you all around. I want to see 10 seconds of this. Here we go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Don't oh. swallow him. More, more, more. Yeah. <laughs> His face looks like he's in like he's an actor in like one of those like Porky's type movies, <laughs> and where it's like someone's mom comes in in like a size 55 underpants. <laughs> Can I shop now? No. All right. Okay. Let's be quiet. Okay. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Please let me spit them out. <laughs> I love you, Mom. <sighs> oh, God. That's it. I'm done. Oh, that was okay. it? Give me, give me, like, okay. I'll go, go on, <laughs> go on. Take two. Here we go. Oh, shit. EFW Radio. Listen to our podcast. Yo, yo. Ryan Scott, he is a man. I quit this joint. That was my plan. <laughs> wow. There we go. That was bad. That was Are we it. done? Yeah, we're, we're done. done. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're, we're out. Bye.